Okay then, so we've had a play around now with making pages and linking between those pages inside a layout component, but the website currently looks terrible. So I wanna spend this video talking about a few different things to make it look a little bit better. Styles, fonts, and images. So to begin with, I actually wanna talk about fonts because Next.js gives us a really easy way to import either Google fonts or local fonts into our projects. And in fact, in the starter project, Next already shows us how to do this with the into Google fonts. So we just import the font from next forward slash font forward slash Google. And we can import any Google font, by the way, that's available here, not just enter. And then we instantiate that font down here and pass in an options object to configure the font. So inside that currently there's subsets, which is an array of subsets that you want to include for the font currently set to Latin, which we won't change. But we can also add other properties like weights to specify what weight you want or styles to specify what styles of the font you want, etc. But you don't need to manually add those if you're using a variable font, which most Google fonts are, so we can leave them out. So what I do want to do is change this into font to one called Rubik instead, because that's what I want to use for this project. So change that in the import at the top and then also the constant name down here as well. And then finally, we need to do it in the template where we apply the font as a class. And this is how we apply these custom fonts to elements in the template. We use the class name prop and then pass in whatever we called the constant up here and use the class name property on that. And under the hood, next is going to apply a custom class to this body tag, which registers this Rubik font on it. And the cool thing about using this next font module is that the fonts are self-hosted and served up from your domain, so there's no need to make any external requests to Google Fonts for it. All right, now and in a browser, we can see it using that Rubik font. It's not terribly different, but I can demo that it is Rubik by inspecting something. And in fact, if we go to the body, then we can see we've got this font family right here that says Rubik inside of it. So this is the Rubik font that we're using. Awesome. Okay, so next up, I wanna talk about styles. So there's a few ways that we can add styles to an application. We can use global styles, which we already have a style sheet for right here, which then gets imported into the layout file. And any styles that you add there are going to be global and apply to any page because every page is wrapped by this layout file where it's imported. We can also use CSS modules to scope certain styles to certain components. And we do that by making a .module.css file, and then we can import them into whatever component needs them. And as much as I like CSS modules for this course, I don't want to get bogged down by them, but I will leave a link below the video to a page which goes over how to use them and set them up. And they are really, really easy to set up and use. And then we can also use Tailwind out of the box as well because Next.js has already set it up for us. And we can already see that we have a Tailwind config file right here, which we can use to extend or change the theme in any way. And in fact, I'm going to do that right away by first of all, getting rid of this background image property that's already registered. We don't need that. And then I'm gonna extend the color palette to add in my own theme color for the website, which I'm gonna call primary. You can call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. But the value of that theme color is gonna be hash 7856FF, which is kind of like a purpley color that looks quite nice. So when we add this custom color to the theme, Tailwind automatically under the hood creates utility classes for that color. So for this series, I'm going to be using the global style sheet for any global styles and also Tailwind to create some basic component styles as well. Now, if you head into the global style sheet, you're going to already see that Next has imported the three directives that we needed here for Tailwind to work base, components, and utilities. So those three things need to be inside this global file for Tailwind to work. And then we can go ahead and start using Tailwind. Now, sometimes the way I like to work is to make up some classes in my global CSS file for common UI components, like buttons, cards, form fields, etc., and apply multiple different Tailwind utility classes to those. That way I'm not polluting my component templates with a bunch of different utility classes, which in my opinion makes it a little bit harder to read and it gets a bit messy. So then I can just use my own custom classes and sprinkle in a few extra Tailwind utility classes whenever they're needed. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm just gonna paste in a load of styles rather than type them all out from scratch because this is a Next.js course, not a CSS one. 
but I will quickly go through them. So let me just paste all these in. And by the way, you can get these from my repo, the course files. It's over here. Woohoo! So don't forget the link to those is down below the video. So you can copy and paste those as well. But right here, we have some base styles for the body. And where you see this apply thing, that's a Tailwind directive. And basically, all we're doing is saying apply these Tailwind classes to this selector, right? So that's instead of writing all the properties. We're just using these utility classes that Tailwind provides. And I find that a bit easier. So we have some base styles for the body to apply a color to the background and text. Then the H1 and H2, again, we're using our primary color this time. And you know, like I said, Tailwind generates utility classes for that color. This is an example, so text primary, and we can see it's that purpley color. And we say text large. I don't wanna go through everything, but basically we're applying some space in here, some space in here, um, text color and style there for the anchor tags. Then we've got some nav styles. Remember we have a nav components over here. So we're applying styles to this right here. And we're giving it some padding at the bottom, uh, border, we're saying flex, item center, yada, yada, yada. Okay, some styles for anchor tags and span tags in the nav. Then when we hover over them, and also we have a border of zero for the nav as well. Then we've got some button styles right here and some hover styles for the button as well. Um, down here, we have some form styles. We're not using these tags in our components at the minute. This is just so in the future when we do use forms and buttons and things like that, then they look nice. And I don't have to keep on going into the style sheet, right? But either way, we're applying a few different classes to forms, labels, and then the different imports, text areas, etc. cetera, um, form button. And then we're gonna have feedback on the forms at some point and maybe other parts of the website as well. And we're just applying some styles for any error feedback right here. Then we have a card component. So if I want to show a card, I'm gonna use this card class. We apply a few different styles to that. Uh, we have a pill down here, which is like just a small kind of pill shaped bubble around some text normally with different colors. So this is gonna be for later when we're listing out all the different tickets on the page and they have different priorities. We're gonna use the pill class and these different priority classes right here to kind of colorize them. And that's pretty much it, my friends. So that's the CSS. Like I said, I don't want this to be a big CSS lesson or anything like that. I'm sure you already know CSS and you don't want me to spend 20 minutes explaining all this. But the point is all of this is now going inside the global CSS file and that's getting imported inside the layout. So it's gonna to apply to the entire site. And because we have Tailwind installed and we are uh, using these directives here, we can apply these different Tailwind classes inside these selectors. And not only here, but where we need to, we can also apply some of those classes to different elements inside our page components or other components as well. Okay, cool. So that's the styles out of the way. I do also want to add some content now to the home page, just some dummy content. And again, I'm gonna grab this from my repo because it's very, very basic HTML. So you can see right here, this is what I'm grabbing. We just have a main tag, an H2, some lorem ipsum. We have a diff right here uh, with a link to the tickets. And then that's a button, by the way. We're using the button primary uh, class that we just added. Then we have an H2 and there's some cards down here as well, okay? So very basic stuff, I've copied that and I'm gonna go into the home page, and I'm just gonna delete this and paste it all in. All right, so we get an error and that's because we're using a link here to forward slash ticket. So when we do that, we need to import the link component. Now, instead of me writing out, I'm just gonna delete that and then type it again. And you can see we get an auto import if we click on that, cool. So that's pretty much done now. And I only did this so that we could kind of preview the styles that we just added right here. It gives us some content to work with, doesn't it? So now let's view this in the browser. All right, so that's looking a lot nicer. We have the nav bar nicely styled. Uh, we have the home page here. This is the button that we created and the cards down here looking pretty nice. This and this go to the same place. So if we click on this, we should see the tickets page, which is empty at the minute. Eventually, we're gonna be listing tickets out here as well, but everything's looking a lot nicer now. There is one more thing I wanna do in this lesson, and that's to add an image over here to the left of the title in the nav bar. 
So I've already dragged this image dojo logo into the components folder next to the navbar because that's where we're going to be using it inside this navbar. I did say you can put static images inside the public folder if you wanted to and you can do you don't have to put it here to me it just made sense to put it here because we're using it inside the navbar. So what I'm going to do is use the built-in image component. You could use a standard image tag if you wanted to, but we're going to use the image component, which comes supercharged with extra features and different props we can use to alter the settings of the image. So let's do that. Image, I'm going to click on this to auto import it from next forward slash image. And there are a couple of props that are mandatory. The first one is the source, and that is going to be this thing right here. So we need to import that. So I will say import, we'll call it logo, but call it what you will. And that's going to come from dot forward slash and then dojo hyphen logo dot PNG. By the way, this image you can get from the course files, the GitHub repo. Remember, the link to that is down below. And then for the source, we can just reference that logo. So the second required prop is going to be the alt prop. And that's just going to be a string. We will say dojo help desk logo all right so there are other props we can apply to this there's quite a lot in fact and i'll show you some of those in a minute but we're just going to add a handful more first of all we're going to add the width prop to set a width and that width is going to be 70 and this is in pixels and by the way i've not shown you this logo have i so it's just a little ninja logo if it eventually loads it's quite big so that's the reason i'm applying this 70 pixel width right here just to make it smaller i could also apply a height if I wanted to but if I don't do that it's going to auto scale the height based on this width so next I'm going to say the quality and I'm going to set that to 100 and that is the best quality I think the default might be 80 or 70 I always forget but I think the default isn't 100 so I'm going to set it to be 100 which is the maximum quality and then also I'm going to use a prop called placeholder and I'm going to set that equal to a value called blur now what this does is look at the source of the image and the colors in that image and it creates like a blur effect that mirrors that image based on the colors in that image while the image loads so for a second or split second you're going to see that blur and then we see the image itself when it's loaded so it's just a nice little added effect that we get for this image component there are other props we can add, which I will show you in a minute. But for now, I think that will do us fine. I'm going to save it so we can preview this now in the browser. OK, so there it is in all its glory, the Ninja logo in the navbar. Awesome. Now, I did want to very quickly show you the image component on the docs because it has a list of other props you can use on it. And if we scroll down, we can see all those. So the source, the width, we've seen all these, the alt the quality, the placeholder, which we set to blur. But there's also other things as well, like loader, fill property, sizes, priority, style, etc. So if you click on one of these, you can read more about them. So the placeholder, for example, is this one. It shows you the type of value it expects. The default is empty, but we've set it to blur. You can click on others to read about them. So we have an onloading complete, and that will fire a function when the image has loaded so that can be sometimes useful i don't want to go through all of these but you can check out the image component in the docs just search for it right here just go to search and then image and you're going to see that component right here all right so have a play around with those if you want to in the next lesson we're going to start fetching data in our components